Let's go to Todd, who's on the line in Rolla, Missouri. Todd, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. How are you doing today? I am living the dream, sir. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks. How can I help? Well, I, I'm kind of, I'm a middle-aged person. I'm 46. Um, I've done a lot of different things, and it seems like the older I get, the more things I get interested in. It's really hard to to kind of get down into that discovery phase that you talk about of what do I really want my next job to be? And mm-hmm. I didn't know if you had any advice for, for narrowing down when your list is too long. Well, uh, yeah, I'd love that. Um, so we're talking about uh, work that is defined by pure, unadulterated joy. When you're in the middle of it, when you're, you're just completely uh, consumed by it, and you look up and time has flown by, and you look forward to it, and then when you're in the middle of it, you're consumed and feeling awesome, and when you're done and you're driving home, you go, man, that was just phenomenal. That's what we're defining as the top passions. Do you understand? We're not talking about, well, I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy doing this. I mean, if I could pay you to do this, you'd feel like you were stealing. And I think that's where we begin to narrow the list. So you have to be the guy who determines that, but it's a higher, um, it's a higher level of passion. It's not just I like doing it. Passion's not like. You understand what I'm saying? Like I, I, I like chicken noodle soup. I don't love chicken noodle soup. I love clam chowder. You see the difference, Todd? The difference between I yeah, love, I, I really, really love this versus, well, I like this. So, I mean, what what gets you fired up? If you look at your life over 46 years, work you've done in the past or work that you've dreamed about but never pursued, but you know that your heart would be set on fire. Let's talk about those particular items on the list. What are those? I think maybe some of the most recent ones um... – when I'm, I, I remodel my house, you know, when I do a, a major project on that, there's a lot of satisfaction out of stepping back and looking at something I've done. So I'd throw that on that list, I think. Okay, but how would we define um, that? Would we define that as carpentry work? Um, yeah, some carpentry, some design work, but mostly the actual work, you know, whether it's set and tile or whether it's, you know, doing electrical work. I mean, I like it all, the plumbing Oh, okay. Okay, now that's interesting. So uh, you, you kind of get a little bit of juice out of all of it, the electrical, the plumbing, a little bit of carpentry trim, all that kind of stuff. There's not one that stands out to you? Not necessarily. I, I think I think the common thing is, is the problem-solving aspect of yes. it. Yes. Figuring out how I'm going to make that work. All right, now let's talk about those. Let's talk about the problems you most enjoy tackling. Give me an example. But, but you've given us a few, but give me a few more from your work history. Problems you just love tackling. Uh, let's see. Um, I would say uh, technical problems, things that require spreadsheets to analyze. Oh, ah, interesting. Now, that's different than uh, fixing the plumbing in your uh, guest bathroom. So which yeah, is that's higher? Where my problem is. No, uh, no, 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 no. It's not a problem. Change your vocabulary. It's not a problem. Okay. It's not a problem at all. You're one of those people that I secretly am very envious of and and can have a bad attitude towards the Todds of the world. You know why? Because you're really talented. Right. You're, you're really talented. You can do a lot of things. Let's be honest. Am I right? I think so. Yeah. And, and that's, that's both fun and, and frustrating sometimes. Well, don't let it. We're going to change your whole paradigm right now. Uh, but it's interesting to me, the spreadsheet. So which of the two types of things do you enjoy more? Looking at a technical problem and you're solving that for a company, you're looking at spreadsheets, you're looking for patterns. Tell me which one of those uh, you, you get the most juice out of. I think probably the more practical stuff, the hands-on stuff I like better. Yeah. And so, by the way, uh, the same mind that allows you to tackle a spreadsheet and a technical problem uh, allows you to, tack, to, to to be able to use your hands to fix it. It's just one is a mental strategy that fixes, a, you know, like if you're looking at numbers and spreadsheets, you go to a boardroom, we start crunching numbers. That's all mental. But the, but the same mindset for you is you can look at um, a problem, you know, in a bathroom or something, you know, or electrical issue in the house, 
well, the light's not on in this room. This switch is working, but this one isn't. You know, and you can chase that down and figure it out. And you love not just solving it in your mind. You like fixing it and standing back and going, look at that. I fixed that problem, and now it is doing yeah. what it is supposed to do. Right? Definitely, yeah. I think you're right about that. All right. So here's the thing. Let's just for fun for the listeners who are maybe in your shoes. They're going, oh, Ken, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, my guess is your top talents. Let me take a shot here. You interrupt me and disagree if I'm wrong. I'm going to say your top three or four talents. One is problem solving. I'm going to say another is you're pretty good at analyzing things. And um, I'm also going to, I'm wondering if you have a great talent of, um, do you have the, the, the strength of empathy, meaning you're able to listen to things, listen to people's problems, and then I, kind of come at it from a different angle that they go, oh, that's pretty good. I idea. didn't used to. Mm-hmm. You didn't used to, but I you do now? I didn't used to, but more and more I find that um, one of my kind of, like you said, the thing that gets me really juiced up is giving personal advice is, is really big for me. Interesting. So do you see what's going on here, Todd? You start off the call going, oh, I got all these different things. I'm not sure what to do. And I, I think that you want to be in the business of solving people's house problems. That's what I think. Because think about it. Yeah, I think you might be right. Well, let me just tell you. So let me give you a real example. Let me tell you where I think. I'm going to paint a picture and you tell me how it sounds, how it feels. All right. I just had... On the front of my house two weeks ago, I hadn't even told Joe this. Two weeks ago before I left town to one of our smart money events in San Antonio, I'm on my way to the airport. My wife calls me. She took the dogs out front to do their business. And a big, heavy flower box that we had on the front of our house below my boy's window had fallen off in the middle of the night. Now, Todd, this is a heavy flower box. You know what I'm talking about? And it ripped off two or three pieces of siding. And it was a mess. And here's the front of my house. It looks like the Clampets, you know, from Beverly Hillbillies. And I'm sitting there going, right. what am I going to do? My wife doesn't know what to do. And usually I handle all that stuff, and I'm getting ready to jump on a plane to San Antonio. And when I get to San Antonio, I'm with Dave Ramsey. We're going to our affiliate, and I've got, I got a full day. So you understand how stressful that is, right? Right. So I, we got a hold of somebody. Two days later, it couldn't get anybody out that day, and I'm feeling embarrassed. And then it was raining. I was nervous about my house getting wet. You know, the whole deal. I got all kinds of anxiety. So I finally got a guy to come over on the weekend, and uh, I need somebody who understands my stress and my problem. I also need to say, well, look, I don't want to fix this. It needs to be fixed. But I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get ripped off. I want to, I want to make sure I trust you. I want to make sure that I, I, I don't spend a fortune when maybe it's this much. There's all types of anxiety and things that I'm unsure about as the customer's got a problem. And, and you, Todd, are a guy who can listen to people's problems. You're listening to my problem. You're going, man, I don't want to spend a fortune if I don't have to, but I, this needs to look nice. I got to do it. And you're listening, understanding, and then you're trying to win my business. But you're doing it in a way that you ease my frustration, you ease my anxiety, and you go, hey, listen, I've done this. I can fix this. I can get it done quickly, and we're going to do it this way, this way, and I think it's the most cost-effective way to do it. And then you actually go do the work. Does that sound like something that would give you a lot of juice if you were doing that for yourself? I think so, yeah. I've, I've always wondered about if I belong in a small business or maybe even run in a small business. Yeah, but it's just you. So this idea I just gave you is something you need to soak on. Because if you decide you want to try it, guess what? You don't have to quit your current job. You don't have to make a huge Geronimo jump. You just have to start putting yourself out there as a handyman. You know, friends and family, somebody's got a small problem in their kitchen. They got a little plumbing problem in the kitchen. They don't want to call a plumber. They can't get a plumber out there. They're worried about paying a fortune. You come in and fix the problem. And then you get to test this idea. Because here's what we know. You want to be about solving problems. And if you can solve a problem with your hands, that gives you the juice. Yeah, that's right. So it's not as complicated as it felt, is it? No, it's not. I, I really appreciate that. I think the, one of the things I appreciate listening to you is that you do break it down into steps. And so rather than having to face a huge change you just take steps toward it i really like that good well listen i listen i'm not saying that's what it is but i that is a one role that lines up 
uh, as a possible sweet spot for you where you can use that problem solving ability the ability to analyze the problem then solve the problem with your brain and your hands you bring that to the table and working for yourself and solving problems for people man i gotta tell you and by the way this is a business you can start and move at your own pace there's no pressure. You don't have to hire a bunch of people. You don't have a big payroll. You can do this on the side. You can do this on nights and weekends. You're 46 years old. You probably don't have babies anymore. So I see a lot of flexibility in, in, in allowing you to test this because it's not that big a deal. Let's say you do two or three jobs. And you go, well, that wasn't it. I'd rather do it for a corporation or maybe I'd rather get in and fix technical problems and go fix people's servers. Then go find somebody who does that. But you're really close. And I would no longer allow yourself to be distracted by this idea that, well, I got a million ideas and I don't know how to narrow them down. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's about thinking, what would I love to do most? And let me test it. I don't have to quit my job to test this idea. I can do it on a small level. Folks, when you do that, two things happen. Number one, you get clarification on whether or not, okay, this is something I enjoyed. And oh my gosh, if you enjoy it and you put a little extra money in the pocket, there's the confidence. Hey, I got paid for it. And the other, the person on the other end paying me money was happy. Wait a second. I can do this. Clarity, confidence works every time.